Joe Biden's toothless foreign policy on full display yet again. Israel rejecting Biden's advice to, quote, take the win when Iran launched but failed to land 300 missiles and drones inside Israel last Saturday. The Jewish state retaliating by launching a limited strike on Iran. A U.S. official says Israel struck near a major Iranian airbase and nuclear site about 200 miles south of Tehran. So far, reports indicate that Iran has no plans to strike back. And while tensions rise in the Middle East, the pro-Hamas students at Columbia are back at it. Cops raiding their anti-Israel liberation zone encampment, arresting 100 of them, including squad Congresswoman Ilhan Omar's daughter. Today, they tried to rebuild their anti-Israel solidarity camp, but minus the tents. Jesse, I find it so curious as those students, frankly, children in student clothing, saying that they are all Hamas, which does that mean they are all rapist butchers? They called a black female NYPD officer to her face, KKK. Why is that solidarity seem seemingly acceptable as Ilhan Omar says, oh, those protests definitely aren't anti-Jewish, and her fellow Democrats say, well, that's just political reprisal? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I'd, I'd hate to be related to Omar. Uh, doesn't seem like the best person <clears throat> to instill values to other people, but... You know, sometimes you need to get suspended to learn a lesson. I surely got suspended a few times in high school, and look at me now. Look at me now. See, I learned my lesson. And I don't know what they're doing. It looks like a lot of young women. I don't see a lot of men out there at the protest in the camp. You tell me what that means. Uh, maybe they're missing something in their lives, but this isn't it. I would definitely not side with terrorists as something that, you know, I'd filled my... Friday afternoon with when I was in college. I think I speak for Harold and everybody here around the table. We were doing different things in college. I was. I was studying diligently. We were studying Library. diligently. Thinking we were doing a lot of things diligently. Yes. <laughs> and you were suspended. The people who know, you were suspended for trying too hard. I was in the library <laughs> past <laughs> library <laughs> closing hours. hours. Yes. You refused to leave. <laughs> That's why. Trespass on the library That's right. after hours. And Harold, here's the thing. So we talked about the, the message that the Israeli defense would have sent to the world it's been argued that we will respond to any attack on our soil. It's been argued this is a sort of demonstrating capabilities. But the reality is, to me, the biggest message was, hey, guess what, Biden? I don't care what you say. What say you? So I, I, I think a little different. I, I, I heard that, I've heard that narrative today. And um, I think a little differently. I thought that what the, what the Israelis did, they had every right to do. Every country has a right to defend themselves. We, as a country that has been the greatest, their greatest ally, and they're our greatest ally in the world, uh, we have a, one of the most unique relationships. We may only have a, a more unique relationship with Great Britain than we do Israel. Uh, we're allowed to say the things that we want to say. I thought what Israel did last night in their response was uh, tactically and strategically and militarily brilliant. It was as powerful a message as you could send uh, without killing one. Remember, they sent over about 300 missiles, and we shot along, Israel and us shot them all down. Uh, uh, Israel sent about three drones or missiles, three drones, and basically told the, the Iranians, we know exactly where your nuclear reactors are. We know exactly where your most important military assets are. So we can either do this or not do this. I don't mean to simplify it in that way, but that was, that was the message. And the real thing that concerns me is when the Iranian uh, defense minister or their defense spokesman said, this is a new equation for us now. Uh, in my lifetime, we're not seeing the Iranians and the Israelis go at it in the open. It's always been proxies. So the question becomes, is this cap on escalation serious and do we go back and revert to the proxy war or not? I think we will. The, the Iranians aren't even saying that this was a big deal in their country and the Israelis aren't even owning up to the fact that it was done by them. I think the most important thing to happen, to Emily, and I'll shut up here in a moment, the, the Congress passed the rule around the foreign aid bill and Speaker Johnson put his political career as speaker on the line to do it. 
I thought today what he did was to show that he's Speaker of the House. Sometimes Democrats and Republicans in the last 20 years, when they become Speaker, they're the leader of their party first. He's the Speaker of the House of Representatives, and the, the courage and the bravery that he showed today, he showed that not everyone, someone doesn't have to be right, someone doesn't have to be wrong, that the country needs to win. And he represented his constituents, and I applaud those Democrats who supported that rule, who broke party line, and I support those Republicans who broke party line to advance uh, this bill, and hopefully we are able to get the funding, the $61 billion to Ukraine, the $26 billion uh, to Israel, uh, and the $13 billion to Taiwan. All right, Sandra, you've been covering this since minute one. What do you say? In fact, I was just looking for if there was any yeah. updates at this hour. Um, Dan Hoffman earlier today on our network said this may be only the beginning of Israel's counterattack. We'll obviously have to see what happens in the coming hours and days. Uh, really um, raised eyebrows at the White House press briefing today, which we covered live this afternoon. John Kirby wasn't at the microphone. Uh, he is often, he oftentimes is. Um, within 24 hours of this attack, didn't step up at the, at, to the microphone. Karine Jean-Pierre led off that briefing by saying, um, if any of you ask me about it, our answer is no comment. Um, very odd that they couldn't even simply say something like you just did there, uh, Harold, that they have the right to defend themselves. Um, but that wasn't even said. Mayor Adams weighed in on these protests, and they seem to be growing in number. Um, they seem to be getting bigger and more vile, is what he said. The vile treatment of these protesters, to the police in particular. Uh, yesterday, they filled six buses outside of the university. They, at one point, stopped and made a chain in front of them to not allow those buses to move, to allow police buses to move. So think about that, chanting KKK at the police, as you mentioned, yelling pro-Hamas. Uh, slogans and slurs and, and, and holding up their signs. I had a student on from the university earlier today. I feel horrible for these people. What about those students? What about the students who aren't involved? What about the yeah. Jewish students on, on campus? Yeah. What about them? Who's standing up for them? Who's protecting them? Who's helping them feel safe? She's living out her dream going to that university, just left the IDF. There she is, and she can't even walk down the sidewalk at her school and feel like she's safe. I mean, a college student. That's where this has gone, and it's gone too far. But that's the same campus, Tyrus, where over 100 professors signed on to a letter supporting students who were defending Hamas's military action on October 7th. Right, but they're always the same thing as no comment. Elon, Elon's, hey, what's going on with this? They never, ever own their stuff. They never stand up whenever they're questioned. Oh, no, no, it's, it's, it, that's not what it was. That's not what it was. And when they're, do you support Hamas? They won't answer. Do you, I am Hamas, but we don't know what it is. They don't know what words are. You're calling a black person the KKK. You clearly have no idea what KKK means. They just spew stuff. Unlike Jesse, who was diligent in the library to the point of suspension, these... <laughs> So they go to college and they don't cause and they have no knowledge and no experience. They have, but here's the thing. We give them too much credit and we give them too much camera time. They do those chants that need work. They don't rhyme. They don't sound right. No one can get behind them. What they need to do when they do their marches, turn the cameras off. You can still tell the story. You can still be present and not give them their moment on TV. It's this. I look at them the same way as a, when when someone's arrested for committing a crime and they become famous for being on TV, take the mics, take the cameras away and let's see how long these marches last because they're doing it for reaction. Because when something, if you go back and you made a great point a couple of days ago on the, when the civil rights movement, when you asked Martin King what he was marching for, what right, he was standing right. for, anyone with him, Peaceful. if they're willing to die for what they're, they would be, yes, and this is why, and this is what we want. When you ask them, they, if Jesse asked them, like, oh, you're racist, you're the KKK, so who's in there? Is it me and Harold and the Klan and Jesse? Or can we all do it? It's all inclusive now? But what it comes down to, it's nonsense. Turn those cameras off, still report, and let's see how long these... These things actually last. And think chants about, that rhyme. Think about yeah. where this thing has come from. It was a pro-Palestinian, free Palestine to we are Hamas. Yes. Now, I could, there's a total difference in saying that you want to protect Gazans, you want to protect people in Rafah. But to say we are now Hamas, I'm not. They you should say want we to are protect now everyone in the, no, in the Middle East. But not that's, that's a criminal act. Yes. You yes. can't go out and say I'm in ISIS no. and not be arrested. They should be arrested. Yes. Period. That's right. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.